Not bad. Not so we take much ball down. Because they were born right around the same time, they've grown up together, and they're pretty good friends. You can usually find them right next to each other just like that. Baby Draft is more than six feet tall, though, and maybe about how you feel the feet from their mother. She's very important to be tall. Of course, we do have other crowds just eating up the stage right in front of us. So we might be able to get a look at it in the long The rule of thumb is for every photo of height, it's about an inch of pump on a draft. Again, anywhere from 14 to 18 feet tall. So on average, the tongue's about a foot and a half long. So they'll use them to pull down tree branches that would otherwise be just out of reach. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, we're just going to carry on for now, but like I said, we'll come back to the tile of that towards the end of the tour on our way back to the camp station. <laughs> on our way out though, on the delta on our right hand side. And to pull up a little bit further, a great look at Raider from the show. There's yours! I like that! They get their name from being the largest flamingo species, even though they only weigh from 4 to 8 pounds. Like other flamingos, they'll walk out into the water to look for food, and they're filter feeders. So they use those long knives to reach out into the mud, which will scoop in their hook shaped beaks like a shovel, and then they'll sort through that mud with their tongues to see whatever they can find, whether that be algae, or crustaceans, or even just minerals. <laughs> I just think that the other thing in those species, a lot of people do with salt like this lighter color is doing a couple of things through the thing. Of course, bottle often does apply a little bit better in the salt water, but it's also reflecting light away from their body. So you can have a big blur in that hot environment. On that note, I think it was a pretty famous for standing on just one leg. Maybe the folks who do that. Because by keeping the other leg out of the water and up against their body, it's even a bit warmer. I think you guys are going to start to climate already, but it's good because it's a little bit more comfortable for them. As for you, Jay, I want to thank you all for coming to the Safari Park today. Okay, so if you have an interview with the Safari Park building, I can also go to the Wild Park Park. But the other thing that San Diego is doing is all so okay. Party Park started out as a breeding facility oh, for the And while it does still serve that perfect today, there's an entire organization that shifted more towards conservation as you're talking about. There's a great example of that coming up on our right hand side and the Rhino Rescue Center. Home to our Southern White Rhino Breeding Program. You would have liked the other thing. I thought I saw a rhino in there towards the back, but I could be wrong. I'll float on Justin Payne. Okay, it's like the surprising low for this morning. Okay, it's like the surprising low for this morning. Oh, I can see them. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. We do have that same species back in East Africa, though, so maybe we'll have a better chance to see them over there. The Southern White Rhinos are one of our greatest success stories. We've had over a hundred babies for in the ground. And we hold the world record for the most of any facility. That species was once thought to be extinct until 1895. A small population of just under 100 was discovered in Africa. The average brought that number back up to around 40,000 southern white rhinos. That is exactly the kind of fun back we're open for with their cousins, the northern white rhinos. Right now, they're functionally extinct. There are only two of them left in the entire world, and they're both females, they're too old to carry them. That's not the best out there. But they're still open up to Our conservation scientists have a good amount of protein that is here, both male and female northern white rhinos. We only need southern species, a very good boat, while bringing the northern white rhino back to the rich species. We're going to hang tight here for just a second while we let the car behind us pass by. Thank you. 
Very dark. 
it's even darker than the table. But with that, they're not trying to blend in with anything. You go big and dangerous. So they want to stick out as much as they can so everybody around them knows to stay clear. So a little close to us. They have this gem box, but they're alive in the gray coat. The light color doesn't help them blend in with that grass very well. The natural habitat is a lot like what we have here in the hills of San Diego. A very sparse vegetation and large boulders. So they're trying to blend in with rocks. Take a look at the markings on their faces. Those are called threat maps. Part of what the black lines are doing in those threat maps, seeing up their horns, you kind of make those horns seem a little bit larger than they actually are by elongating that horn line. And that helps them compete with each other. Because after all, if you're a gen talk trying to compete for resources, you're going to want your horns to seem as big as possible. To try to intimidate the other gun spots away from those resources. Yeah. 
the process, congrats to the Uganda Cops, and that's where it's so from Uganda. So yeah, well, we can spot them pretty easily with their bright orange coat. Their predators can't see the color green. Both went in really well with tall grass. Predator. In an active form of defense called mobbing. 
They will mob that predator together with those horns until it's dealt with. Get out. They need as much of a head start as they can possibly get. Yeah. 
Well, that can never happen here. They're not sure about that. A little further up though, on the hillside behind that caravan truck coming down, we can finally see a couple of southern white rhinos. This is the most social rhino species. Because they live out in the savannah. They don't have anywhere to take cover. It's just grass all around them. So females of this species will stick together just knowing that it's easier for them to protect their young that way. And it's mainly the young they need protection. A fully grown southern white rhino is way too big for a lion or a hyena to try to come out. In fact, they are the third largest land animal, and only the African and Asian animal. They're so big, just their heads alone can weigh 2,000 pounds. They're still waiting anywhere to support the state cells. And then, uh, as we begin the first appearance at the end of our tour, I want to thank you all again for being here today. We are a non-profit organization. Every single dollar that you spend at the safari park goes back to the conservation of these animals. Of course, San Diego's new wildlife land, and our mission is to create a world where all life lasts. And only available at the camp page to try to answer this question. Final though, we're going to do a full and complete stop after the train. We're going to take a right here inside towards the station. You can see a black mountain. Inside that knock forward towards the front of the train, push on that door, and we'll open. With that, we're going to do a full and complete stop after the train.